Uh, Kinson Liu is the CEO of Imagine Vision, maker of the Zcam product line of professional VR cameras, including the Zcam S1 and S1 Pro, as well as the recently announced Zcam V1 Pro, which is the one that just arrived, uh, which is a stereoscopic camera. And um, Nick is the founder of Revolver, a VR AR storytelling company. He speaks and consults on VR and AR at NAB, CES, Sundance, and South by Southwest. And he often shoots with a Zcam. Um, so to start it off, I guess let's talk about the new one. Let's talk about the V1 wow. uh, stereoscopic this camera. This is just the newborn baby deliver. Uh, I should introduce myself too. I'm Robert Hernandez with the Immersive Shooter on day two from the heart of the NAB Show Expo. And we're starting off with this camera, the Z Cam that has really, Nick and I were talking, this is not PR. We return GoPros. I returned, uh, under advisement uh, from Michael, uh, I returned my GoPros and upgraded to the Z-Cam, uh, which is the beast that I'm using now. But this is the newest one. Talk about the this one. Yes. Um, we were on such an interesting journey. I remember uh, last year this time, when we first came to um, Las Vegas for mm -hmm. NAB, we brought our prototype, the engineering sample of our Z-Cam S1. Um, and then we shot some footage and then we were accelerating and then on our development and luckily we lived up to our promise and we were able to um, ship the Zcam S1 last December. Um, ever since but the development didn't stop there. So we continued to develop um, the S1 Pro yeah. which is the, um, the more premium uh, version of the S1 um, and then here comes the Zcam V1 Pro, V1 which Pro. is a cinematic 3D 360 VR camera, and I think this is among one of the best image quality stereoscopic VR camera right now in the market. We are shipping next end of next month. Um, we have been shooting um, some uh, very nice demo footage, which I suppose some of you may have seen it already. Yeah, well, actually, why don't we yeah, take advantage and give the camera to Sarah? Sarah has a handy cam there. Why don't you put it on the desk? Yes. Take and a close then, look. Uh, take Sarah a close look. some uh, shots of it. We want to cut to the, that handy cam. So the V1 Pro is equipped with um, nine, what we call eight plus one uh, micro four third lens and sensor. Um, very good low light sensitivity and also dynamic range. Um, in the VR world, you probably want the highest possible uh, image quality and also number of pixels. Um, the Zcam V1 Pro is capable to do 8K um, mono and also 7K stereo. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things, uh, Sarah, I don't know if with uh, Kinsen's help, show the, the underbelly in the port. Right. Uh, and point it to the camera there so we can see it. Uh, can you talk about those ports there? Right. Um, we have taken the um, advice from um, from the professional field, thanks to uh, Michael Mazzori. Who will be joining uh, us in our next segment. Radiant Images. So um, we have installed the Lehman power socket. Um, this is the, the, the engineering sample. So in the commercial sample, there will be um, one Lehman port, but we will have a branch out split cable. Um, for connection to two Lehman circuit, which means that you can do um, hot swap um, standing by with the two external power source. There's a, a gigabit Ethernet port here. Um, in the commercial units, this will be upgraded to um, 10 gigabit. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> capable of doing fast file transfer yeah. and, and streaming, hopefully. And there's also a USB port here, if you have noticed. Yeah. So this will um, will be capable to for connection to um, ambisonic um, external solution, which should, is which is needed. It shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be denied that while while this is a phenomenal toy, the V1 Pro. Toy. Uh, yeah. Toy. toy. Exactly. Nice. Toy. A very <laughs> nice toy. All right. The, the, uh, what the, childhood the, did you the, have that the, I did not? The, the S1, which is which is this is you know this is currently shipping. It's an existing product. I've used this one quite a lot, as well as the Pro version. What's fascinating is that even this product alone, which is clearly at a much lower price point, but it's is now very mature. The software is in its 15th version. They're iterating super super fast. 
even this can deliver 6K material, 6K 30, 4K 60. And 6K Correct. is beyond the capabilities of the current yeah. mobile market today, which is where the bulk of the material is consumed. So frankly, one of the reasons why, ever since I first encountered Kinson a little less than a year ago, one of the reasons why I was so bullish and I, and I wanted to do as much as possible to work with, with the company is because I was so impressed with what they managed to pull off, not just on the hardware side, but also on the software side. Because there's a, traditionally, many Chinese companies are incredibly strong on software, but sorry, on hardware, but on software they can be a little bit weak. But the stuff that Zcam is doing with Wonder Stitch and Wonder Live is a, is a massive step forward for, for post workflow and for the industry ecosystem as a whole. Not to mention what's just been recently announced, the partnership with Assimilate for a, for a scratch VRZ solution. But yeah, that's, um, you know, we can go on about more about that yeah, if you like. Yeah, we have some details in terms of when will this be available for folks and what is the price point for that and then the price point for this one so people see the Okay, the so um, the ZGAM S1 um, is being offered in the market at uh, 2500 US dollar. Okay. Uh, we have, the, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, premium version of the S1 uh, called the S1 Pro is being offered at um, $8,880. Okay. Um, the ZCAM V1 Pro, the stereoscopic uh, cinematic VR camera, um, will be in the range between 30 to 40k US dollars. 30 to 40, okay. And when Correct. do you expect them to be available? Um, timing be wise, it will be available towards end of May. End of May, end wow. End of May. Uh, we want Th to do May this year. We're next month, to... next month, next month. You guys month. have been moving. So, so one month from now. Fast. So, right after NAB, we've got tons of work. Uh, we haven't we still have a lot to, of work uh, when it comes to um, image training and optimization uh, because whoever is uh, going to be in possession of this, I mean, they will take this to high profile professional job. So we want to make sure that we deliver the highest possible image quality, which uh, we get a lot of uh, advisors and um, input you know, from uh, our friends like uh, Nick. I, I wanted to talk about that. I, like I said, I got the, the Z1 cam and I took it to uh, the Salton 2 with my students to do a production there and right. we had a problem with the firmware and we immediately went to the Facebook group. People said go to the Facebook Very group. Very good community, thanks to Facebook. Yeah, and you and Jason were really fantastic on we top on of it. 24 hours. Yeah, got, got, thank you for like at three in the morning we were freaking out and we were able to problem solve it. What have you learned from that model to this model that the community helped you evolve? Um, I think we are still, you know, on a, you know, a, a, fast track when it comes to learning and um, development. Um, image quality, uh, there's no limit on that. I think it's, uh, we are ever pushing the boundary uh, in all fronts. Um, it's very important to notice that um, in order to do a good job, you know, to deliver a very good uh, professional VR camera product, it's important that we involve, you know, all the way um, from the optics, the lens, to the camera, the camera's firmware, and also to the stitching software. So this whole end-to-end -end thing is very complicated because whenever we, we see an issue, we see a problem, we can design, you know, full discussion with our friends and users. Where is the best position to, to tackle that problem? Sometimes it might be the stitching software, sometimes it might be the, the camera software, sometimes it might be the user interface, which is not really perfect. I think I, I think we are we are we are we are far from perfect, but we are we are improving all the time. We want to stay ahead of the competition. We want to do better, and we want to become the best. So this is still a very young market. I think the momentum is here. It's, it's going to to take off um, dramatically. Uh, but it's important that we we, we we listen to customer. We 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 do the sharing and we do the improvements um, all the time. So, I mean, it's, um, it's a very new way of, uh, of doing it. W would you agree, Nick? Yeah, I mean, look, there's, we can give two super, super clear examples. For example, the very first versions of the S1 did not have a 3816 on the top. And it was a couple of us who were using it said, well, it would be really useful to have 3816 on top. You can put on a Masonic mm -hmm. mic, yep. you can mount it in different ways. Less than two weeks later, suddenly a sample materialized which had 3816s on the top. That sort of speed and response from a camera company is quite surprising. Now, you can also see that the, the lower side of the original, I don't know if you can see, here we go, we can put this to the camera. The lower side of the original S1 didn't have an external we tap, can, uh, did not have an external tap for USB, nor did it have external power sources to be able to daisy chain itself. And as Kinson pointed out, 
the base of the of the V1 Pro oh. in terms of evolution has <laughs> both of those things. So it's it's just an example of how there actually has been a very healthy community, and that's down to all the aspects of it. I mean, it's down to the camera company being responsive. It's down to their team spend giving the extra time to spend on the on the on the Facebook groups, and it's down to frankly us as users. Who are very active and it's it's very collaborative. It's a it's a funny time, but a good time in the industry right now because you can actually do this. Yeah. When it's it's going to be, you know, some ways. It's I think we're going to look back on these days as, as phenomenal early pioneer days where movements being leapfrogged. There's a lot of competition, and but everyone's still friends. Who knows how long that'll <laughs> stay? The other um, input we have taken um, input from from the community is the. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have um, introduced um, the demo um, power socket. Yeah. And on this the Waka 119 lens, um, it comes with uh, five stops, um, f2.8 to 11, wow. um, adjustable. Mechanical aperture. Mechanical so, aperture. Uh, this is very important hey, Kenson, on set. Show that a little closer. So this is very important on set to be able to adjust the aperture um, accord according to the light condition. And that is uh, via software? Do you have to do a setting? or No, that's a, that's a physical aperture ring that you turn on you the lens. Actually, that's okay. extremely you rare. Actually, yeah. You know, because most, most, most lens systems in extreme fish eyes don't have physical apertures. You know and it's a, it's a really big deal to be able to do that. The S1 Pro has that as well. The S1 Pro uses a 220 yes. degree version of this lens, but also has a mechanical aperture in it. So yeah, for sure, strict being, you know, when you're dealing with the S1, all you really have control over is shutter speed and ISO. Sure, sure. But adding the idea to be able to quickly change mechanical aperture gives you, gives you a lot more control in, especially in scripted narrative environments where you can control the lighting on the set. And we actually have some footage that we're going to show from the S1 Pro um, as we leave. Unfortunately, we are out of time with Kinson and Nick, uh, but we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with Michael Mansori from Radiant Images, and we'll show you that footage as we uh, exit here. See you in a minute. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you very Thank you. much.